This tutorial is for where to find and how to import 2D assets into Unreal Engine 5. So the first question is, where do you get your assets? Well, there's a few different places you can go. First off, there is the Unreal Marketplace. Now one thing to be aware of with the Unreal Marketplace is you have to look here for the supported engine versions. As you can see for this particular asset, it's not supported for Unreal Engine 5, so it won't let you download this asset, but there's a way around that. If you go into your Epic Launcher and you go into your library, right here, Engine Versions, this plus symbol here allows you to install other versions of Unreal Engine. So you can install an older version like I have here, 4.26.2, and having that installed allows me to download assets that aren't compatible with Unreal Engine 5. And because they're just art assets, they work just fine in Unreal Engine 5. They just don't have the label for it. So what you do is you download the asset, add it to an Unreal Engine 4 project, and then just open that Unreal Engine 4 project in Unreal Engine 5, and you have access to those assets. And then you can just copy them into one of your Unreal Engine 5 projects. And obviously, if it says that it's supported in Unreal Engine 5, you can just natively download it into 5, and off you go. So there's one place where you can get your 2D assets. Another one is itch.io. As you can see here, I've done a search for 2D sprites. We got lots and lots of asset packs that you can download. Some are free, some uh, you have to pay for, just like on the Unreal Marketplace. And another one is just a simple image search on Google Images. And all you have to do with that is bring them into an art program like Paint.net, which is free. And if it doesn't already have a transparent background, which is necessary for a sprite sheet, or individual sprites if you find them individually, is just use the magic wand tool, select the background, delete it. Now it's ready to be saved as a sprite sheet. Okay. Now once you have your sprites or sprite sheet and you want to bring them into Unreal Engine. I brought a few in here. First thing, I want to take a look in for an idle animation for a robot. And you notice that it's got this weird hazy pink edge around it. And that's not the way that it's supposed to look. And the reason for that is Unreal Engine adds anti-aliasing to all your assets you bring in, which normally is great. But when you're doing pixel art, you don't want any anti-aliasing. You want those nice, hard edges. So for all of the assets that you bring in, right-click on them, go to Sprite Actions, Apply Paper Duty Texture Settings, and this will get rid of that anti-aliasing. So if we go back and we take a look at it, now we've got that nice, clean, hard, gray edge that the image is supposed to have. All right, so you want to do that for everything you bring in. All of your 2D images you bring in, you want to apply that effect to all of them so you get those nice clean edges. Now another issue that I discovered is this background image that I brought in that's just a, a blue sky background. This is the way you want it to look when you bring it into your game, but it's not the way that it'll actually look. If I generate a sprite from this, create sprite, and I bring it into my scene, as you can see, it's not blue, it's green. And that, I struggled with that for, I don't know how many hours. <laughs> uh, and I asked in the community and I found out what was going on. And because it's a monochrome image, Unreal Engine mistakes it for a normal map, not a picture. So what you do is, when you, when you double click on the, the original image that you imported, simply go over to compression settings here and change it from normal map to default. And now, as you can see, it's now blue. So if you run into that issue, that's all that's involved. And you notice, notice I didn't have to recreate the sprite. Uh, anything that's derived from the original asset, if you make changes to the original asset, everything derived from it automatically changes. So I didn't need to delete the sprite and recreate it. Okay, so 
now we have a sprite sheet and we want to get all the individual sprites out so that we can make them into a flipbook animation. So right click on the image, sprite actions, extract sprites. Now it's going to automatically pick, uh, uh, try to identify all of the sprites on the sprite sheet. And it seems to be working fine here. So we hit extract. It creates all our sprites for us. We select all our sprites, click on the first one, hold down shift, click on the last one, right click, create flipbook. Let's call that FB underscore for flipbook. Uh, idle robot. Now we can double click on it. We take a look at our animation. Okay, it's animated, but there's something wrong. His feet keep moving up and down. If I try to put that in a scene, his feet aren't going to stay on the ground. There's, there's something wrong here. And the reason for that is, so we're going to want to get rid of all of that. The reason for that is when we did the extract sprites and we let it automatically try and identify where they are, the algorithm that they use starts from the middle of an image and works its way out. So it's centered on the middle of the image. So the Im if the image changes in height, the, the bottom gets pulled up so that the feet bounce up and down. So for this particular one, we can't go with auto, we have to go with grid. We're going to have to manually tell it where the images are. And it's very easy to do. Over here, it starts out showing you the, the total size. It's one big cell. So it gives you the, the total dimensions. And all you have to do is just take those dimensions and divide it by the number of pictures. Right? So for the height, it's too high. So 128 divided by 2 is 64. You can see, split it in half. And then 256 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, is 64. It just so happens these ones are square. They're not always square. Sometimes the dimensions are, are different for height and thickness. But we select that. We again select, oops, didn't hold down shift. Select all our images, create flipbook, FB underscore idle underscore robot. Now we double click on it and his feet aren't moving up and down. So there we go. We've created an animation, which we can now use in our characters. Okay, so now we, uh, we have a plain background image. We have an animations, which we can assign to our characters. But the other thing we need is the, the elements in our scene, the tiles in our scene that our characters are going to walk on and, and have in our scenery. So we have a tile set here. And from this tile set we've dragged in, we're going to right click Sprite Actions, Create Tile Set. As you can see, there we have our tile set. Now, if I click on here, as you can see, the square doesn't match the size of the tile, so we need to match that up. So over here for tile size, the default is 32, but these ones are one quarter that size, which means we need to bring these down by half on both dimensions. So 16 by 16. Oh, it didn't take the setting. 16 by 16. There we go. So now they're the right size. Now, right now, these tiles are just pictures. The, the game doesn't know, or the engine, I should say, doesn't know anything about these tiles. They would just be pictures like background images, your character wouldn't interact with them at all. So if you want your character to be able to stand on them, bump into them, things like that, we need to add collision boxes. So what you do is you select a tile that you want the character to be able to interact with, and you just click Add Box. And over here we can see where our collisions are by clicking on the Collision Tiles button. So you can see that one now has a collision box around it. So we'll add a box around that one, add a box around that one, uh, and you can add circles or you can create your own custom polygons. So for example, if we have uh, this one here, and we try and add a box around it, as you can see, that box, that doesn't fit. Right? So what we can do is 
we can move individual nodes around to reshape to better fit our image. So we can bring it down like that, we can bring it down like that. If, it, if the snapping isn't like the, that's not lining up very well, we can change the snapping distance. So let's change that to one. There we go. And that's more precise. So we can, if I got the right one selected. Oh, I selected the entire edge, not the, not the dot. So yeah, you can move an entire edge as well to get it to line up better. Once you have done all your collision boxes for your tile set, click save. We go back to our content drawer. And now we want to add a paper 2D tile map. Okay. So let's call this TM underscore my tiles because I'm just not creative. So we double click on that and this is where we're actually going to paint our tiles into our scene. So first off, how big is your scene? Well, we know that our tiles are 16 by 16, so we're going to need to change that. And then you want to put in the dimensions of how big you want this tile map to be. Now, you can, you can have more than one tile map in a scene, so you don't necessarily have to do it all in one big, huge, like if you've got a, a massively big scene, you don't have to do it all in one tile map, right? But let's say, for example, uh, your scene is, is smaller in size, so you can do it all in one go, and your scene is, say, 25 tiles wide and 15 tiles tall, all right? So that is your working space. Down here, click where it says pick a tile set. Select the tile set you've already created. And then you just select the tiles that you want to draw with. And you just paint them in. All right, and let's say we want to have a ledge up here. Like that and then when you're done just click save we go back here and you grab your tile map you bring it into your scene as you can see there it is put it in front of our background and then you can place your character on there what other objects and that should get you started hopefully you found this information useful Several of the, the issues that I ran into as I was learning how to do this process, I found very frustrating. So hopefully, like the, the problem with the background turning green, I will have saved you some headaches.